Hello and welcome to a rather overcast uh, early September day in Dusseldorf. I bet it'll get really hot later though, though it looks a bit uh, autumnish from here right now. This is Caravan Salon and uh, I'm going to take you uh, to Knaus Tabert. Before I do this though, I want to show you this, this uh, Land Venugen. Uh, it's a system like France Passion, uh, but it's in Germany. But look at this, they've got now uh, um, 4,300 Stellplatz, a uh, place to stop at, and uh, so it's um, a huge book. In fact, I think they've started doing the book, they just do it online. But it's uh, everybody I've spoken to, it's in this system, it thinks it's great. And uh, I've you know, I, I'm sort of I'm sort of in the system. I don't know if I'm saying sort of. I haven't used it yet, but uh, I do absolutely uh, intend to make a start doing things like that. All right, you can see we've got these enormous halls. I think there's 17 uh, really big exhibition halls, and they're full of motorhomes. See the size of this one here? Number four. Look how big it is. And now we'll have a look at how big it is going back as well this is the largest event in the world for motorhomes uh camper vans <laughs> rvs in general because we also uh, caravans drop caravans and uh, there's equipment here uh, there's some sort of basic equipment like all of us have got and there's some super advanced equipment as well okay here look at the size of uh, this hall here how big it is this is a new one this was finished i think it was finished in 2020 actually just, just before or, or during the covid period there look so that's number four which i showed you earlier look how big it is and we're gonna go in here unless i've been locked out of course uh which in the circumstances i wouldn't blame them and uh <laughs> go into this one here pull this is uh, Knaus Tabert. This is the newest uh, hall. Uh, it's also where one, I think the main entrance is actually, is in this uh, hall. Now, uh, as you, if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know I have a very negative opinion of Knaus Tabert. But I think that some of the warnings I have been putting out are now uh, becoming increasingly uh, public knowledge. In 2021, their share price fell from 72 euros approximately to around 28. Okay, over the next few years, it picked up. But in August of 2024, it collapsed for a second time. This time from 45 to 28, it did pick up over the next uh, couple of days to do around 32. Now. Knaus Tabert did make an EBITDA uh, profit. Uh, I, uh, so I don't want to start explaining the differences between various profit and things like this. Um, I, I was a financial journalist, so I try to, uh, I try to keep things uh, simple if I can. But it did make a profit. But the problem is this. It is holding on to stacks of stock. And the fear... It's not... That's... Which... You say unsold, but everything's unsold until it's sold. So that's, but it's, it's got stock which it's unlikely to sell. And this means to say there's fear on the market that they're suddenly going to release a stack of stock and with the effect that that could have on driving down camper van prices above all, uh, to a lesser extent. But the camp now, if we look at some of these things, uh, such as the, the box life uh, ones on the Fiat Ducato, the Citroen, that it's more or less the same in every vehicle. There's not, you know, not much difference from one manufacturer to another. Um, Knaus has the problem that it uses an insulation system which it sort of encourages condensation, uh, uh, which was using PU. Uh, Having said that, some of the vehicles, it has seemed to be coming away from PU uh, recently. Um, so, uh, so that is one thing that is a risk of bankruptcy. Uh, it's gone, sorry, a number of companies went bankrupt in the past, but uh, uh, 
that there is this. Now, I suspect that, uh, I have no inside knowledge of this, but I suspect that if anybody is likely uh, to come in to take over this company, it's like that Winnebago is like to come in as a strategic investor. Strategic investor is a investor from the branch who's going to put, buy up stock, uh, which is, and then it's going to in, put its own values onto the onto the company. Now I've uh, I've talked of difficulties with the management uh, that I've experienced. I've reported things, problems, and the management's taken no interest whatsoever. And now I put report from other companies as well. Uh, people have told me, viewers have had a problem. I have intervened, and it gets resolved. Except with this company, it just they just couldn't care less. And now I know normally it's the dealer, and a dealer from any company can be bad or good. Uh, but uh, my experience has been that, and it's also things that then you know the disputes over payments and things for, for very small amounts of money. Which uh, and this, uh, this is, but it's, it's it's the reaction of the management which has bothered me in things I uh, I've seen before, and this could also explain why the company has these uh, the financial uh, problems that uh, I, I've discussed. Now um, I will come back to this, but this uh, company is now affecting the entire industry as far as these things are concerned and this has come at a very bad time it's directly related to covid but there's two problems because the first thing is all these people have bought vans which i did videos in 2020 discussing this one people bought vans and they decide oh well i've got to dump the uh, sewage and i've got to look for water and oh this isn't for me at all and so then they decide they're going to go back to spain and uh, take a flight to benidorm or something like that or whatever they do uh, so they're doing that. So, so these vans have been lying around for doing nothing for the past two years. Some people have bought them in 2020 and don't really want them. They're coming onto the market. And at the same time, we've got this massive over-purchasing of uh, base vehicles. Now, I was doing videos from this very spot two years ago, talking of the shortage. You can't get base vehicles. Now there's no problem. There's base vehicles all over the place. And uh, so the uh, people, they bought the base vehicles and they're now they're stuck with them on big car parks waiting to get done. In the case of Knauf's Tabot, we are talking of very large numbers. So they uh, went over the top. Now, uh, there was somebody who uh, wrote a comment about me saying nasty things about the Canals Tablet, uh, which are unjustified. Well, um, I can say this. I can read a balance sheet. And I would suggest that other people also had a look at that. Um, so, uh, I've given you the, an overview, an overview of the market. What's likely to happen? We can see this in another video with, with base vehicles, uh, sorry, the base camper vans, the Fiat Ducato models, things like that. You're seeing prices now um, well under 50,000 at the base price. And um, I think that this is a, a trend uh, which is likely to continue, even though the equipment inside, you know, the, the, the boilers, the, the toilets, the, uh, 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 the, the more expensive stuff, that has maintained the price that it gained after COVID. So there you go. There's a slight economic overview uh, and how the problems of one company do affect the entire industry. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, give you a bit of an explanation there. Uh, my problems with uh, Canal Tabot as a company, I believe in telling the truth. I don't just, uh, um, you know, I just don't just repeat the nonsense that's put out by the corporate nonsense. Um, I have been known to argue back at press conferences. At the press conference that Canal Tabot had this year, it said nothing of its uh, um, financial difficulties. It only said some something about. Uh, how great it is to have a motorhome and go and do van life. That was it. 
you know, as if as if uh, motor journalists didn't already know this. <laughs> Thanks for watching.